Hello, my name is Paige gibbons Backus, and I am with the Prince William Historic Preservation Division coming to you from inside the Brunsville Jail to tell you a story about slavery that has national connections from the small town here of Brunsville, and that is the story of Dangerfield Newby. Dangerfield Newby, he was born in 1815 to Henry Newby and his wife, Elsie. Henry Newby was a Scottish landowner who lived nearby in Fauquier County, but Elsie was enslaved and she was owned by a man named John Fox. Henry and Elsie lived together and actually had several children together, but according to Virginia laws in the 1850s, the status of whether or not someone was free or enslaved was determined by the mother. And so all of their children were born enslaved, including Dangerfield. However, that all changed when Henry decided to move his family out west to Bridgeport, Ohio, effectively freeing Elsie and their children. And so Dangerfield was able to grow up as a freedman, where he became a craftsman and he became a blacksmith. Dangerfield, he came back to Virginia when he fell in love with and married a woman named Harriet Jennings Newby, uh, but she was enslaved by a man named Dr. Lewis Jennings, who lived here in Brunsville. Lewis Jennings reportedly had money problems, and so he actually threatened several times to sell Harriet and their two youngest children in order to get some extra money. However, he made an agreement with Dangerfield that said if he could raise $1,000, he could actually purchase his own wife and his own children and get them their freedom. Now, $1,000 in the 1850s is approximately about $31,000 by today's standards. So Dangerfield set to work not only as, again, a blacksmith and a craftsman to get that money, he also actually tries to raise money uh, from locally here in Virginia, as well as back in Ohio where he grew up. And there is actually a newspaper article from the Western Chronicler, West, excuse me, the Western Reserve Chronicle that actually tells about his efforts to raise money. And I want to read you that article today from December of 1858. And it says, a manumitted slave trying to purchase his wife and children. A mulatto man by the name of Dangerfield Newby, formerly a slave in Virginia, is manumitted by his master and is trying to raise money from the friends of humanity in this region to purchase his wife and his two youngest children, now held in slavery by Louis A. Jennings in Prince William County of said state. He wears whiskers and a mustache, is 38 years of age, and about five feet, nine inches in height. He carries undoubted certificates of his identity and that the story he tells is true. He has had some success so far in his efforts of the sufficient amount, and his books and his papers will show the amount received. As fast as he gets money of sufficient amount, he deposits the same in bank to provide against loss and in order that the public may see that he is no imposter and there need be no fear that any charity bestowed upon him will be unworthily given. We would recommend him to the charitable and philanthropic throughout the land. And so Dangerfield eventually was able to raise that $1,000. But when he went to Dr. Lewis Jennings to try and purchase his wife and his children, Dr. Lewis raised the price. And so in what must have been a bit of frustration and anger and desperation, Dangerfield Newby actually would end up joining John Brown. And so on October 16, 1859, Dangerfield Newby was one of the 21 men who participated in a raid on Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, there at the U.S. Arsenal to try and get arms in order to try and create a slave revolt throughout the South. Dangerfield Newby, he was one of the first ones who was shot and killed over the course of this event. And the raid was unsuccessful and it sparked nationwide news and would actually prove to be one of the events that would help lead to the start of the Civil War. Dangerfield was among one of five African American men who participated in this raid. One other in addition to Dangerfield was shot and killed during the event. Two others were captured and later executed, and one was able to escape to Canada. 
And on Dangerfield's person, after his death, they actually found a letter from his wife, Harriet, written from here at Brentsville that helps give historians some idea as to some of the feelings that Dangerfield might have had and some of the reasons as to why he might have made such a desperate uh, act to join John Brown in an effort to try and free his family. And the letter reads, Dear Husband, I want you to buy me as soon as possible, for if you do not get me, somebody else will. The servants are very disagreeable. They do all that they can to set my mistress against me. Dear husband, you are not the trouble I see these past two years. It has been like a troubled dream to me. It is said that the master is in want of money. So if I not, so if I not know what time he may sell me, then all of my bright hopes for the future are blasted. For there has been one bright hope to cheer me in all of my troubles, and that is to be with you. If the thought I should never see you again on this earth, life would have no charm for me. Do all you can for me, which I have no doubt you will. You must write soon and say when you think you will come. With Dangerfield's death, Harriet and her children were not able to get their freedom. Shortly after the raid, Mrs. Jennings did decide to break up Harriet and her children, and they were sold to different cotton plantations in Louisiana. Unfortunately, historians lose information about what happened to her children, but we do know that Harriet was able to survive long enough in these plantations where the work was much harder and life was much more strenuous to see the Emancipation Proclamation and the end of the American Civil War giving her her freedom. Shortly after the war ended, she was in a Freedmen's Bureau camp where she met and started a relationship with another person named William Robinson who had encountered a similar situation where he was from Virginia and he was sold into the plantations in Louisiana. And so they eventually got married, and in the 1870s, they moved back up here to Northern Virginia, settling in Fairfax County, where they would live for another 10 years before Harriet passed away in the 1880s. The story of Dangerfield Newby is a tragic story of slavery that is connected here to the town of Brentsville, but a story like this is a story that is not uncommon throughout the South. Thank you for listening to our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoy watching these kind of videos, please feel free to click and subscribe to the Prince William Historic Preservation Division's YouTube channel and stay tuned for more videos.